man, people couldn't get their head around. They're like, what do you mean? Like, okay, I'm gonna race from the bottom of the UK to the top, but we're gonna go on this really complicated <laughs> route where it's a lot of off-road and maybe walking, and I've gotta carry all my stuff. How long are the stages? And I was like, oh, the first one's like 630Ks. <laughs> They're just like, well, what do you mean? Just left the ride five minutes ago. As a bike racer, you always want to win, or you want to help with a win, or you want to be prevalent in the race. You want to do something. But I started the Grand Tour in the Vuelta. I'm way more nervous about this. Way more nervous. So yeah, finishing it, that would be a huge victory. I, I think it would be like one of the biggest achievements I've had in bike riding, just to complete this thing. It's the day before we leave. What have you got so far? I've got nothing packed. Nothing at all? No, I just came home from a race last night. So I'm procrastinating by going for a bike ride. Mm. And then I'll get to it. So the GB Duo is a self-supported bike race from Land's End, which is the bottom of the UK, to John O'Groats, which is the most northern part. I have no idea what it is that I'm really about to do because I've never done anything like it. And this is my first dipping my toe in, uh, except I think dipping my toe in involves just jumping right in the deep end. I mean, they're nuts, basically. They are rebelling against normal way of life. They say, we've got it easy, let's do something that we're not sure we can do. So GB Duro is a four stage gravel ride. Our route is 2000K and we're not looking for a straight line. We're going to the best national parks and the best mountains that we can find on the route and um, it's going to really challenge the riders. The timing is done through Instagram, so it's done through time stamping of photos. You take a, a timestamp photo at the start of each stage and at the end of each stage and then um, between the stages you can have as much time off as you want um, but you need to get to the finishers party by 8pm on the second in order to kind of qualify for a, for a finish. Did you find this in the trash? I'll give it a watch. I think I should take this. The idea with the alternate calendar was it's like, it's like let's go into all the different aspects of cycling and just see what they're about. And Ultra was kind of that one that was, that's the final frontier of what racing is. It's the furthest out there you can go. Ultra racing, when I first heard about it, I was like, that's stupid. You're just out there and it's like, who can just keep going? I watched a video about like the race across America. I remember at some point a guy had like a pole strapped to his neck, like duct taped his head. He was holding him up because he was so tired. Uh, and I was like, there's nothing there for me. Well, this is going to sound really bad, but I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I feel a bit sorry for him because it's such a cruel route. No one's ridden the route in full yet by the way. I've wrecked like a lot of it, my friends have wrecked it. This is the, the first edition. Yeah, it's gonna be daunting and awkward and frustrating and it's gonna be see, interesting to see how he deals with it. There are so many qualities that he's gonna have that nobody else has um, because it's what he does. But then you've got, you know, I know of a few in there who, uh, yeah, they, they, they know how to ride these events. They know how to look after themselves. They know how to ride through weather and sleep deprivation and all of that stuff. So it's like you say, what he's used to, he's gonna have to do that all by himself, which has got to be a real step change. This is the only time in my life I've been so sure I'm about to go and hit rock bottom somewhere. And it's like, it's weirdly exciting. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm very willing to do this. I really want to do this. And I think to do something like this, you've got to really want to do it. And I don't think there was a lot of takers um, from my teammates who wanted to take this on. Here we go. To be honest, I think this might be a journey that I need to go on by myself. From what I've seen 
from the ultra racing is it's a lot a lot of what you get out of it is that solitude and and looking into yourself and working out what you can deal with as a person and how you overcome these things and where your own limits are. I mean, I think that's what this is ultimately about. It's like self-discovery. And then just busted into a supermarket there with a trolley that's just grabbing everything. And like, <laughs> sat down outside. I ate my Cornish parsley. Every pocket's just full of stuff. I've got enough food to get the full six hundred, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Top it off, like cruising down the road. And I'm like looking up and I'm like, it looks like an EF jersey. And there's just some dude down the side of the road. And the EF jersey just like, come on, I'm like, yeah. And I was just like, yes. It's like, okay, this is not so bad. Like, she kind of had like the adrenaline at the start and just being like, oh, this is going to be fun. Angus, the guy I was driving with for the first 100K, he said, oh yeah, I'm just going to press on through the night. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was the thing. And then I was like, oh, I guess you can just do that. I am absolutely loving it. Chickens. Bring on the night. When I was in the section just before Bristol in the middle of the night, um, scrambling around in the bush. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, this is going to be serious. Too much for me. Maybe I'm not an ultra right now. So weird. So weird. Plays with your head so much. Just because you go from just like, this is great. What are we doing? This sucks. And then the next minute, like, I feel like I'm in the depths of depression. depression. <laughs> what are you doing out here, man? <laughs> You're killing it, that will do. That last two hours was incredibly challenging. Yeah. It's the worst because it's like you could just see town here. Yeah. And it felt like I was just in this forest walking up hills. Yeah. Just like ankle deep in cow shit. Yeah, yeah. What the f Bristol? Yeah. So watching is, I didn't even know it was like a phenomenon, but basically you can follow these races online and everyone carries like a, a tracker, a GPS tracker. And you can see where everyone is spread out on the route and they show up as a dot, you know, they're a dot on the map. And you can sit there and watch them and, and see the progress. Sometimes you can be, you know, following along and you see they hit a hard spot. You're like, oh, they haven't moved in like, you know, 12 hours, what are they doing? And then other times you'd like go to bed and wake up and you're like, oh, they did like 300 Ks. I just woke up, I was watching the dot all night. I fell asleep though. I fell asleep at like 4am. But I stayed up because I thought that I thought he was going to stop at 400. But I guess he's just kept going like he said. And <laughs> this is my new life now. I sleep <laughs> with the laptop beside me. I sleep with my phone making sure that I'm still getting notifications. <laughs> Ciao. The guy woke up early but looked at the dot and thought bloody hell he's steaming it long. I didn't expect him to come through here until late morning. 24 hours in. I still got something like 140k to go or something. I'm busy walking. And there was like, we'd come off this hill and it was just all grass. <laughs> and the, the GPS, like, like you're going along and then all of a sudden the GPS rat just went like that, like off the side of the hill. Look at this shit. And that for a nice Sunday walk. And actually it's so steep, I can barely 
push my bike here. So this would be testing on any ride but right now. Oh, this is gonna f***ing crack me. Christ. Riding at night, it's amazing how different it is. Like, because you just end up way further inside your own head. Because, like, there's so much less stimulus. So you're just thinking about, like, how you feel, really. So it's just like a huge mental battle. I think I got in at 4 p.m. and I'd started at 8 o'clock the morning before. If I do the math on that very quickly, I think it's 32 hours. Uh, I got a bit of trench foot after the second day. I crossed a creek like within 5 k's of the start and then spent another 32 hours in wet shoes. It really didn't bother me because I was so tired and I was just so happy to be there. Like the hosts were amazing. I was a bit earlier than anyone expected, so they would like they were hustling to get some food ready. And unbelievably they had an amazingly hot shower, which like if you I was not expecting a warm shower, so that was already a huge win. Oh my god, you did it! I've been refreshing this page like every 20 seconds. Yeah. Man, there was one bit that I was, didn't think I was gonna get it. I just rode for 30 hours. I'm gonna go to bed. Stage two was hell on earth. And that's when the dot watchers first started coming out, like just in time. People started just coming to meet me. Back in for a bit. Yes. Before we knew it, like we were in Manchester, like my whole mentality switched to the point where, you know, like, I'll push on. Him and Gus inspired me quite yeah. a lot with the bike, so yeah, I was stoked when he was uh, coming through Manchester. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that guy rubbed me for like a little bit, and he was like, you know, I was sitting at home drinking a couple of beers with my fiance, and he was like, Lock the Mort is coming through town. And she was like, who's that? <laughs> and he's like, He's a boy. Then she said, well, what are you doing? Get out there. I feel pretty good again. I'm not tired again. Like, obviously something wrong with me. From him, I went into the next bit of trail and I thought I saw one of the cameramen. And I was like, I should stop and say, hey. And look back, he wasn't there. And I was like, okay, time to get in bed. <laughs> right at the moment, I was like, I can't do this. This kid came out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm a bit sick, I don't want to get you sick, so. Nice. You couldn't actually, you shouldn't touch me, look, you see all this? It's, oh. it's oh. cow That is a huge pile of cow shit. And I just rode head first into it. And I'm covered in shit. And I was fully lying in it, just like, this is rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> just like, what do I do? What do I do? And I was like, I can't use my water. Like, I need my water. 
and then that was kind of the signal of what was the most testing night of my life <laughs> because the course got incredibly hard. See you later. Give it beans. Because <laughs> there's so many teams out there who take themselves way too seriously. But at the end of the day, like we all ride bikes to have fun. So if you do an event like this, or the Dirty Kanza, it's just, I think it's the best event you could do. The alternative calendar is saying, listen, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're gonna have fun doing what we're doing. And that's it. We may be pros, but we wanna have fun riding our bikes. Had to sleep for like 45 minutes an hour. The sun's up, which is a big win for the good guys. The night is just it's so crazy. And last night it kicked my ass. The times I have stopped, the regret and like intense disappointment I have in myself. You always look back at that moment you gave up and it just eats at you. I hate that feeling. Giving up is always worse than that dark moment. And the dark moments fade, but if you give in to them, they last, you know, forever. <laughs> and then took on the highest paved climb. <laughs> Had this horrendous headwind. It was probably 50 or 60k an hour. It felt like it was just, everything was just being like, no. And I was like, I can do it, it doesn't matter. And so I was crawling up this hill and it just seemed absolutely impossible. I was like, there's no chance I can make this. Oh, I'm perched up on the side of this thing. Uh, I don't understand. This is not bike riding. And I was already at zero, you know, like I'd spent all my biscuits just to get to the top of that hill. It was just, it was so slow, I was so tired, I was so cracked, and then I just started crying. <laughs> like, I was like, I can't. Just finished that climb. Now I'm on this f***ing walking path. It's 12 k's long and you can't ride any of it. It just says go straight. It's I'm so cracked. It went from like a frustrated, angry cry to just like a real cry. <laughs> like I just was walking along in the rain, <laughs> like so cold. Just like walking, just crying for like 10 minutes. This is it, this is the bottom. It's like, so now it's just about like, this is where you wanted to get to. How are you going to react? And then I was just like, okay, well, it's time to move forward. So then I just started like, the section I was on, I like laughed for a second. And starting to get it. I just started running the trail. Well, I did it. I got to that point I, I thought I couldn't, and I got past it. Well, I didn't even really try to let myself think of the finish. I was just, and then when you get to the finish, like, okay, it's done. But it wasn't done <laughs> because I was quite early and the village center was not expecting me. I was like, okay, okay, game plan. Let's work this out. I can do this. Started reading the, the the board and it was like had a bunch of numbers that you could call and then there was a sign next to it that said there's no phone reception in this village and I was like what the I saw a Wi-Fi card so I was like oh, amazing jump on the Wi-Fi then the message came through from um, one of the organisers I'd suggest like maybe think about getting a BNB because um, that you're going to be too early. I think there's only one B&B &B in town. 
found it. And I was like, sweet, went in there, there was a fire going. It was like just this idyllic setting. Just like, I was like, this is where I want to be. I've made it, thank God. The lady who owned the place came down and she was like, no, we're full. Made it to the town, five miles down the road. Proceeded to go to another couple of places that were full. And then finally found the pub and it was just like, I was meant to be there. And the lady's like, do you want to check the room before you book it? And I'm like, no, I, I just want to go in there. Like, like, I don't care. You could tell me it's a thousand pounds. I don't care. Just let me get in there. About to get bed. Do you want to bed already? Oh my God, it's like quarter to seven. You're gonna get up at three. So this is where the stage finished yesterday. When I looked at the route again today, I was like, oh, I'm gonna ride back here to where I was to ride back that way. So the GB Duo is now 15 kilometers longer. Fantastic riding with one of the pros, but you could hardly hold his wheel. We'd following the boys' progress online all the way up, and I thought I'd just come out and meet the guy. I jumped it. Legs must be good. All of a sudden, I was like, this is some of the nicest riding I've ever done. Damn, this is pretty nice. This is just like world class. Well, pleasure. Nice to meet you. No worries. Good luck. Mike Woods is here to give us some really in-depth pro insight into how luck's going because... First of all, we need to find out where he is. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't think people realize, I was saying this earlier, that Lockie rides a s***. Yeah. Like more than the average by a lot. Like yeah. It is like 40 hours a week. Like I think this is Locke's actual dream is just riding non-stop. Like he loves doing this kind of stuff now. No, he loves it. <laughs> Every photo of him from even in Kansas and this as well, he's got this sneaky little smirk on his face like as if he's <laughs> meant to be really struggling and really like in it but he's just like he's just oh yeah. He's a pig and s***. Yeah. I sort of decided I was like okay I don't need to push through the night again. I had such a traumatic experience last time. I was like, I'll, I'll go to there, like check into a cheap hotel for four hours, have a shower, have a like, good sleep, and then get up and go. Oh, can I get a room? And he's like, oh, it's graduation weekend. We're totally full. And I was like, oh no, here we go again. And he's like, the holiday in, they've got a room. I walked in, the lady just looked at me and I could already see in her eyes as I walked in before I <laughs> before I even asked I could see she didn't have a room. I was ready to call it a day. So it's Lael Wilcox. She's riding to a divide at the moment because she's the king of ultras. She had the top tube bag filled with just fries. Like just just loosely in there fries and she was putting salt on them. And she was obviously gonna keep riding and eat some fries on the way. And I was like, that's a good idea. And then saw another photo and she like sitting at the front of a gas station. She's drinking like a pint of milk. And you zoomed in, it was you could see it was half and half. Like she's sculling half and half. And it said uh, day five. And I was like, my god, that's what it takes. Yeah, I can't wait to see what my version of half and half is <laughs> in Scotland somewhere. Alright, there she goes. 
Yeah. Good morning! Final push! Yeah, so he met me like 15 k's or 20 k's before um, I'd planned to stop and he was ready to go into the night. He was like, God, you got to way quicker than I thought. I thought you'd come through in the morning. And he was like, I was going to ride out. He's like, but you got to ride into the night. Um, like, I'll do that. And then I'd purposely not charged my front light the night before, so I couldn't. Because I knew I would do that again. I was like, but if you're an early riser, <laughs> you can have at it. <laughs> I'll be up at three. And he was like, is that the invite? <laughs> he must have got like one hour sleep. He came back out. I was waiting for me there, three in the morning, side of the road, in the cold, just like, smile on his face, like, yeah, let's go. Where is everyone? Let's get on the, uh, on the tracker. Where are all my friends? You're out there for such long stretches by yourself. That you start to think like, what am I doing out here? This is so stupid and pointless. I got a wife at home. This is a selfish thing to be doing. But then you get like, someone stood out there being like, yes, like go. And you're like, oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm in a race. And like, people are excited about it. And you just get like one or two people like that in like hard times. And it makes all of the difference. I feel better than ever. I was like, my legs have just become like, what's happened? It was like I was keeping up with it. They just started going. And all of a sudden I was like, this is it. Like, how could this possibly be? I feel so amazing. That's the point of just like, total content, there's no like, highs or lows or like it didn't matter if I was pushing up a hill or like opening a gate or it was just like this is the best. I just felt great. Like I felt it was like I felt better than the first day. I was like what's happened? And I just had that moment of like I finally get it. Like I understand why people do these ultra races. It's like you get to this point and all of a sudden it's like, I don't need to be doing anything else. I'm right where I need to be. It doesn't matter about getting to the finish because this is like better than finishing like this right now. I popped up over the last hill and then there was just the sea. <laughs> I was like, and I'm here. The wind was just like blowing behind me, so I didn't even have to pedal the last like 500 meters, you know, it just like pushed me down. It's kind of like, okay, you're there now, like you can have this one. <laughs> no, no more tricks, no more gates, no more little steep climbs, like just get there to the finish. So it was an incredible feeling.
spoke to Locke. He just finished. Um, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> because I know that writing is so much more to him than just performance and winning. And <sighs> Locke hurts himself so much just to have the pleasure of being able to ride and I think that this race proves that and Locke really just does this because he loves it so much and what's more beautiful than watching someone give absolutely everything give all of themselves to something to succeed in their own, on their own terms <sighs> ah, f I feel like such a loser for crying I thought about my whole bike career, or from when I started, like people who helped me when I was young, to like my first experience of professional riding, which made me quite like emotional. And then I started thinking about like all my family, and like, I don't know, it was just like this, I felt like I was just reliving my life over the last 40 Ks. It was by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Thank you. No worries, guys.